Hey guys, what's going on? So I'm out here today with the Happy Model Express LRS Crux 35. It's a three and a half inch FPV drone, but today we're taking a look at the Express LRS capabilities of this drone. And it really surprised me the kind of range that I can get. This is not an external receiver. This little board here actually runs an onboard Express LRS SPI that stands for Serial Preparal Interface uh, Receiver. And Anyone who's dealt with uh, SPI receivers on their drones, like whoops, like this, knows that these are not very good for range, typically if you're running the uh, free sky ones. I just wanna jump into this range test with you guys to show you that the SPI receivers of this, of this drone is shockingly good. So let's, let's take a look. Let me go over the test parameters before we fly. So I'm running the Happy Model Slim Pro for my TBS Tango 2. I have set my output power to 100 milliwatts. I think that's comparable to my Team Black Sheep Frisky MPM, which also runs at 100 milliwatts. And I kind of don't feel like walking, so we're gonna try to avoid that today with this range test. So yeah, th that's the test parameters. Express RS, 250 hertz, 100 milliwatts. So let's get it up in the air. I want you to notice the LQ in the lower right hand corner there. Look at how crazy that is. Two minutes. Just ignore that, that's my transmitter. This is, I mean, this is crazy to me. This is an integrated receiver, guys. Express LRS, integrated receiver. So, all right, LQ is dipping to like 99 there. All right, I'm coming back now, but like, do you see that? This whole stretch here is about one mile wide. So I made it pretty much all the way to the end of this stretch. Just amazing for an integrated receiver, guys. Uh, One thing I also want to point out is the control link is just amazing. Whether you're far away or nearby, there's no latency. It just, it feels great. And my hands are shaking a little bit and my heart's pounding because I, I really didn't want to go get it. This is, uh, this has no GPS, so it's quite a bit ways away. Let's uh, land and then I want to do another test. But this next test, I'm actually going to fly into the woods, but I'm going to make it a little more difficult on Express LRS. I'm dropping it to 25 milliwatts. I'm gonna see if I can fly into those woods, see if we get any fail safes with the ELRS SPI receiver on the Crux 35. All right, we're launching. Gonna try to take it easy here because there's a lot of ghost branches. Now remember, I'm not sitting hardly optimally at all. Two not bad. going into all this scraggle. Woo. It's not even, well, there we go. A little bit of drop. Mm. 
Whoop. Let's go under here. Again, we're all still operating on 25 milliwatts here. I mean, that's really impressive to me, guys, for just 25 milliwatts. Integrated receiver, again. All right, so that's a little test. So let's talk about what we've learned. So although I sounded excited about the results that I got, let's take a moment here and pull back and examine the technical details of all this and why actually my result is not that surprising. Let's go back to what we've been using thus far in terms of the serial peripheral interface or the SPI receivers on drones like this. The frisky SPI receiver implementation has actually never been official. Frisky D8 receivers or D16 integrate receiver integrated receivers on models like this have always been reverse engineered. And that's part of the reason why there is such a variance from model to model. There's no consistency. Over the years, I've flown a lot of different models and you just never really know what kind of frisky receiver, uh, SPI receiver experience you're going to get. With Express LRS, there are no reverse engineered elements. The specifications are completely, totally open source. Any hardware-based quality uh, issues aside, you should actually be able to expect, uh, s considering same antennas and everything else, you should be able to consider, uh, get the same experience as a full-fledged external uh, Express LRS receiver, right? And not, to, and not only that, it should be a consistent experience from model to model as long as the manufacturer is implementing it properly. And because it's open source, that spec is out there. It's easy to find. It's not a mystery. They should have no problem imp implementing it. And I think that with the Crux 35 and the onboard Express LRS receiver, that's what we're seeing here. In my opinion, in the long term, Frisky D8 or D16 uh, SPI receivers they're dead. I would be surprised, and you could come back to me and uh, give me hell on this video if I'm wrong, but I'd be surprised if in a couple years that many of the manufacturers are at all bothering to provide a frisky SPI receiver. I think a lot of them are going to jump on board, in integrate Express LRS, and for the micro world, Express LRS is likely going to become extremely dominant. For years, Frisky D8 and the SPI receivers we had, they did their job, but I'm looking forward to getting away from that and doing Express LRS for my micro. So I hope you learned that SPI receiver is maybe not going to be a thing that you should dread, especially when you see that it's powered by Express LRS. All right, so with that being said, guys, let me know if you have any questions. And as always, have a great day. I'm going to go do some flying. The Crux, by the way, the Crux 35, this drone kicks ass. I love it. I'm going to have a full review for you guys, but this was just uh, a look at Express LRS for today. Uh, so anyway, you guys take care. I'm going to do some flying and I'll see you.